Sure, uh, another game this weekend against a, a former team. How big an opportunity is this? Is it, is it seen as an opportunity to cement seventh place? Uh, I don't. I don't know if it would be one to cement seventh place. Obviously, um, another three points would would help us in that kind of journey of what we want to try and do, which would be to finish uh, the top of the bottom half. I kind of stated that a couple of weeks ago. Um, I knew there's going to be a lot of tough games in amongst that, and this becomes another one. You know, we're we're going to face a Ross County side that are off the back of a couple of really good victories. Um, and I and I can see it being a I can see it being a really tough kind of physical game. That's that that's what's evident. You know, just watching through a lot of the footage and what they've done in recent weeks, um, it's it's going to be a it's going to be a bruising encounter. That's that, that that's pretty much going to be the the foundation of it. It's important that we stand up to that. Um, and I think ultimately, I think you look at the top of the the form table. That's that's a huge incentive for us. You know, we, we speak about the bottom half of the table. You look at the the form table over the last six games, and and we sit top of that just now, along with I think Aberdeen and Celtic, which is which is a huge achievement at this stage for for our club. Um, and I want to go and try and add to that as as, as much as possible can. And I know the players um, have a a real aspiration to do so as well. So just finish the season as, as best we possibly can. Um, keep going back to. I don't feel we've come off our levels at any point, so it's really important that we try and emphasise that again in what's going to be a tough game on Saturday. Yeah, you talk about the form tables there. Also, I think in the last 10 games, I think you'd be third or fourth. So it's European form at the moment since you've come in. How well does that bode for next season? How much confidence that that, that is something you can replicate? Yeah, no, listen, a lot of factors will change next season for a lot of clubs, yourself, everybody else, it will it will change. But I think from me trying to convince a group of players that we can be really competitive in this league, then I think you're right. I think it does stand up and it shows that we're we're a good side, we're a good club. Um I just I keep speaking about wanting to try and continue to add layers onto it. Um and, and by that I just mean that there's still aspects we can evolve in. I think I referenced the first forty five minutes against St Johnson in Perth on Saturday um, and I was frustrated at half time the players were frustrated so this is again where I don't sit here and for a second say that it's perfect and that we can't do anything else to improve of course we can there's, there, there's a lot of way to go and um, I think that's a bit that excites me as well I've never been a guy for sitting there and, and just been happy and patting myself and the players in the back and saying we can't do it anymore I, I do I, I genuinely believe that we, we can get better in how we play and how we perform um, and, and I think that that's the bit that keeps us coming back every se- every Every single week to make sure that me myself can improve, but also also the players. Is it? Is there a financial incentive as well, Stuart, to finish seventh rather than eighth? Will that help not just the club, but potentially you bring in more players or something? Yeah, bringing in more players it helps the football club. It's as simple as that. If we can um, improve a league place and. You know, we we can't improve the place where we sit currently, but we can hopefully cement that, like we just spoke about there. As difficult as that'll be with the three games to come in the next week, um, but it is massive for us. It's, it's huge. I think I touched on this last week, and I, and I probably need to reference it again. Um, there isn't this endless supply of money. We 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 don't have a guy sitting at the other end of it that runs this football club that just keeps ploughing in money or anything like that. We don't have uh, we don't have that situation. So it's about us being um, as proactive as we possibly can in what we do, our business, our placings in the league. There's, there, listen, there's only a couple of ways that clubs can improve the, the finance they bring in. This was something that was said to me and it's very obvious. Um, you either sell a player, you go on a cup run or you have a good league place and there's no other ways that, that football clubs dramatically change the financial picture. Um, so again, I've probably worked off the basis of that for, for several years now. You know, When you've maximised what you get in terms of your support coming here and we're, we're well supported as a football club, a lot of loyal supporters come here, give us great backing. If your hospitality sold out, all those types of things, there are only a couple of benchmarks that you can have where you can actually start to improve that. And um, There's a mindset for me as a manager, You know, whatever game of football we play in we have to try and win it because that breeds that culture and that belief that you you know you have one mindset you're very narrow minded in what you want to achieve each week each game um, but that can also help those financial aspects as well because again I did touch on it last week that as far as we sit just now we you know we, almost with deals that are offered and deals that are out there um, to players that are under contract some have played some haven't played since I've come in then you almost max out what you've got so um, again this is where I have to be really clear, yeah you look at players yeah you want to go and try and improve your squad yeah you want to freshen things up and put your own stamp on it, the ability to do that can be limited sometimes so um, the more I can try and bring in potentially a league placing or a cup run be it next year or whatever then that starts to help those those scenarios 
one player who you've not had the chance to use is Nathan McGinley. We've seen pictures of him kind of back on the training pitch. What's the latest in him? You must be delighted to actually see see him progressing back. Yeah, it's nice to see Nathan back out in the park. It's been a really, really tough struggle for him. Um, obviously, I've only got to know Nathan over the last uh, the last couple of months. I haven't worked with him previously. He's he's out doing some very, very light work on the pitch. Um, I think 14 months out of the game. It's, it's an awful long time. Um, and from what I hear from Nathan, the medical guys, the sports scientists, there's a there's a substantial amount of time that has to come now in terms of that build up and that's providing there's no there's no hiccup a touch wood on that but um, it's not just a case of get back on the park and then he's available for selection or he's available to go straight into a pre-season there's an awful lot of work that's going to have to go in to build Nathan up to such a point where we can actually put him back into training sessions so the first step's there because we hadn't got him on the park and, and even to do kind of light running in that, in that 14 months so that's a massive step it was really nice last week seeing him coming back on the park and the round of applause for the players and I think that shows you the togetherness that we've got at the club um, and the feel good factor that we have at the football club and um, I really hope that he can sort of kick on in the in the coming weeks and months and get himself back closer to playing because it's such a difficult time as a footballer when you're you know living away from home and you're not able to kick a ball, you're not really having that focus of a game on a Saturday and I think we have to look sometimes beyond the football and, and how difficult that can be for the individual. I was going to say that mentally, it must, that must be so, so hard. I mean, as a player, what was the longest period? You were out for could you empathise with? No, I did again probably from a personal point of view, I never had an injury until virtually my last day and I was delivered the news at the age of thirty that I was I was finished. I couldn't play football full time anymore from probably two years of abuse on a on my hip where I had uh, you know kind of riddled with arthritis and trying to play through it constantly as I did. Um and again I'm not looking for any medals for that and it's probably not the right thing to do. It's definitely not the right thing to do. Um but I can tell you how I felt when that news was delivered to me uh, when I was playing in the Premier League and you know you were you were out there you were doing your bit for your team um, and and it's it's incredibly frustrating it's hard mentally um, but the the plus side for Nathan is he's never had that that message delivered to him so he has the uh, the carrot at the other end of it that he can get back playing. Can it be difficult to keep players motivated at this time of the season, Stuart? No, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I think if you were dealing with a different group of players and a different group of people, the end, then yeah, it might be. Um, I think when you see all our reaction at half-time against St Johnston, that probably indicates to you how motivated we are and how well we want to do. Um, I have seen situations where players sort of come off and shrug their shoulders and say, ah, well, it's not our day. Um, I don't accept that off anybody. I don't expect it off myself. I don't expect it off anybody at the football club. Um, but again, I've, I keep saying I've not had to fight too hard with any of the players or the staff with, with that sort of mentality. Again, you go back to how difficult a season is. It had been up until a point, um, and I keep indicating to people that you never want to get that feeling again, and you never want to go back to that place. Football's difficult at the best of times when your your attitude's right and you're preparing properly. If you don't do any of those things, then that becomes um, increasingly difficult. And and like I say, I, I just think that if you give that mindset and that uh, and set those standards, then I, I think the game can become easier. It's never easy, but it becomes easier. Um, and and you also talk about evidence base as well I never want anybody to come back and look at me or the players and think because you took your eye off the ball that performance came um, if we have a bad performance it needs to be through honest mistakes plenty of endeavour showing the right personality and sometimes you lose out and we can accept that but we can't if we've not prepared properly I've made it abundantly clear that we, what I think of Max and I keep saying it because I pick him every single week or I have picked him when he was fit we know he's got a, a hamstring uh, niggle just now it's not a major issue but it, it kept him out Saturday and it's kept him off the park um, for a day or two this week as well so I, I would love to keep Max at the football club I've never hidden behind that you want the best players you can get at your football club the fact that he's an academy player that's been given an opportunity over the last couple of months to flourish um, off the back of a couple of good loans as well I have to say um, then I think it's really really important that I, I emphasise that I want to keep the player but that's out of my hands you know whether Max wants to try his hand somewhere else whether his representatives or his family think that his future's better served somewhere else is completely out of my control the one thing I can tell you is that I have offered them the best deal that's that, that's on offer to, to me and to the football club what we can do within the realms of our financial status um, and I've put that out there that's been out there for a while now and whatever comes comes 
but the the bit that I probably the other layer that I need to add on to that is that at no point has it been an issue in, in terms of Max's future, how he trains, how he plays, um, how approachable is, how coachable he is. That's another factor as well that we sort of forget. I think a lot of people go in and play well on a Saturday and think that they've conquered this game and they don't. He listens to everything, he wants information, he wants to work hard. So there's no issue within it at all. I'd love to keep the player, but whether I can or not is is out with my hands. Um, there was a, a report that he was down at Norwich City uh, recently. Is, is that the case? So you're aware of that? I pass. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I would expect that if someone was visiting another football club, if that was the case, that there, there would be some sort of dialogue there. There's been no, absolutely no dialogue from Max or his representatives or anything like that to, uh, to tell us that that was happening. Again, I'm very, very old school in my way of thinking here that if something like that was to come about, then I generally think picking up the phone, a text message, you know, a face to face, something like that would come our way, so I can't confirm that or, or deny it. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether that has been the case, but I certainly know the process that I, I would expect to happen if, I, if that was the situation. Can I ask you about another one thing as well, Jake Carroll, is he progressing well, is he going to be back maybe for pre season? Hey, Jake's still not been back on the park. It was a significant injury. Um, I know that Jake's out of contract as, as well. Um, I spoke to him the other day that the medical care he's had here has been has been terrific um, and that availability, that uh, access to the medical guys here, the facilities and everything is, is great. But the relationship with Jay, he's a really, really good lad. He's he's a, he's a top boy um, and, he, and he knows that the football club's doing everything it possibly can to try and get him back fully fit, to give himself an opportunity to, to get back out there and play and do what he wants to do. Any other uh, team news for this weekend? Uh, no, I think a uh, couple, of, couple of players again have been back on the park, ones that we've been talking about recently. Um, Joe Efford's uh, has been struggling, uh, Rico danzaki has been struggling, um, Ross Tierney, John Obika have, have, have been kind of incrementing back into, into training sessions. Um, so again, just monitoring these guys and seeing where they are. Max is the obvious one that missed last week um, and again we need to see how he is in the next couple of days to see whether he's available or he's He's fit for selection. Um, I'll work away with the medical guys as I always do. Thursday, Friday is really important for us to to try and make those those kind of bigger calls come the Saturday. Ask about Josh Morris. He's been out for a while. Is he somebody that's coming back, or is he going to be next season? No, Josh is. Uh, jo Josh has been out with a, a kind of longer term injury, and I would expect there to be a kind of confirmation on that situation. Um, possibly not today, but obviously in the in the next week or two.